and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to introduce our brand new stencils, Tropical Leaves Background Stencil, Tropical Leaves Stencil, and our Slimline Tropical Leaves Border Dye. So let's go ahead and check them out. First, we're gonna check out the Tropical Leaves Background Stencil, and this stencil is so much fun. It's a two-step stencil, and I absolutely love how the backgrounds with this turn out. So we're starting off with a standard size card here, five and a half by four and a quarter, and this stencil works great on both landscape and portrait. And we're gonna start off doing just one color of ink on one stencil and another color on the other. So here I'm starting out with some Lucky Clover ink, which is a really fun bright green that gives these leaves this very like Palm Springs kind of fun look. And so I'm just gonna fill in each of these leaves. And what I really like to do when I'm inking with just one color is I don't worry if it's perfectly even. I actually like it when there's some darker areas and some lighter areas because I feel like it makes the pattern look really, really beautiful and dynamic. And now for my favorite part of using stencils, it's always the big reveal. I love peeling the stencil off and seeing what's below and look how pretty that is already. So now we're gonna take the next stencil and we're gonna line it up and these leaves are gonna line up in the openings there so you can see how it's gonna line up perfectly. All of our stencils have our website at the bottom so you can see it says lawnfawn.com at the very bottom. I'll often use that as a guide. So I made sure that my lawnfawn.com was at the bottom of my first pattern and now I know it needs to be at the bottom when I use the second stencil. So that's a fun easy trick to easily lining up our two-step stencils. So now for this next layer, we're going to use Twisted Citron, which is like a lime green, which is a really fun mix for these two colors. And once again, we're just using one color on each leaf. Now, it looks really amazing if you do two colors and you kind of ink blend each leaf with a little dark and a little bit of light. And Shari's going to be showing us how to do that in just a little bit. The other thing that's fun about these leaves is we did a traditional green here, but you can do them in any color and the pattern looks incredible. So again, our big reveal, look at this pattern. Oh my gosh, isn't that so fun? I am just in love with this. I think this would look really pretty if you inked the edges and made it look like a little vintage or older too. Now we just created a really bold alternating color pattern with this stencil and I wanted to show you how you can do something really subtle with this stencil as well. And we're gonna be doing a portrait style card with it too so you can see how nicely that lines up on it. Now I've got some pink watercolor wishes paper which is a paper that already has a little bit of this watercolor type uneven pattern to it. And we're gonna take some sponge sugar ink and ink that over top. And this is gonna be very, very subtle. So I'm gonna once again peel up that stencil and get our reveal and look at that. Just very subtle, very, very very pretty. Then we're going to take our second stencil and we're going to line it up in all of those open areas, hold it in place with our magnets here, or you could use some nice low tack tape. And then we're going to ink up in the same exact color because I want a really subtle, just monochrome pattern. And then here we are at our big reveal. It's going to be this really subtle pattern, which actually looks a little more subtle on camera than it does in person. But can you imagine how beautiful that would be for a background? So I love that you can get subtle tone on tone looks or more bold looks like we did earlier and wait till you guys see what Shari is up to with this stencil because it is incredible and she'll be doing that in just a little bit. Now here, I wanted to show you a little bit more of a bold version. I took some of the new Watercolor Wishes rainbow paper and I inked it with Worn Lipstick, which is a much brighter pink. So I'm doing the same idea of this consistent kind of tone on tone pattern in which I'm gonna use the same color on both stencil, but it's more bold. So once again, you can really make this pattern work exactly for whatever design you wanna create on your card. And look how cool that is, I just love it. Now, I love this, of course, almost like a pattern paper or a background for a scene, but I also really, really love die cutting from it. So I'm going to take the brand new Giant Happy Birthday to You die. We're going to run that through the die cut machine and look how fun that is. I absolutely love that. So it's really a cool way to create a fun pattern on a die cut or create a really cool pattern paper. Now this is our tropical leaves stencil and these are awesome for creating individual leaves and you can do plain leaves or leaves with patterns and you'll notice in that stencil that there are some etched lines that help you line up those patterns easily. So we're gonna go ahead and check all of these leaves out. Now, when I ink up these leaves, I use post-it notes to protect my work surface. I am not the most careful inker and I always go outside the line. So I'm gonna cover up the other leaves and also cover up my work surface with these post-its so that I can ink without worrying. So I'll add all those post-its on there and then use my magnets to hold the stencil in place. And then I'm gonna go ahead and ink up this leaf, starting with some Twisted Citron. 
Then we're gonna take our Lucky Clover ink and we're gonna ink a little bit of this leaf just to add a little bit of shadow towards the bottom. So it's a little bit of a darker green and you'll see I'm going in very lightly and just building it up to give this big leaf a little bit of dimension. I'm gonna go back in with my lighter green and make sure that the two greens are blended really nicely together and then our leaf is all done. And oh my goodness, that leaf is so beautiful. So these leaves look great plain, but there's also a detail. So we're gonna do one more leaf so you can see the comparison between the two styles. And we're gonna start off with Lucky Clover this time and then work our way into the Twisted Citron. So we're gonna have our light dark green at the bottom and our light green at the top again. And once again, what I love about these leaves is they never turn out exactly the same each time, which I think is just so much fun. Now we're gonna to go to the detail section. And you'll see in the stencil, there's an etched line that's gonna help you line it right up with your solid leaf. Then we'll hold that in place, and then we're just gonna ink over it with salvaged patina. It's kind of a turquoisey color to give some nice, kind of cool turquoisey subtle dots onto this leaf. And look how beautiful that is. So I love the two looks. You can add the dots or not, and both look amazing. Next up, we're gonna work with the smaller leaf here. And so we're gonna use some cracked pistachio and we're just gonna do one color on this leaf, but we're gonna add a little more inking in certain areas so that it's not completely even and it gives it a really cool dynamic look. And of course, this leaf is great on its own, but we're gonna line up those details with it. So we're gonna use the etched guide on the stencil to help us line it up, then we'll hold it in place, and then we're gonna add in some pine needles this time for the detail. Once all of those little details are inked up, we can remove our stencil and see what we've got. And look how beautiful this is. This time, our details are a much darker look, so there's a much bigger contrast, and I think that's really fun. These are these beautiful leaves. These are one of my favorites from the set. And I'm doing this in some Peacock Feathers ink. And you can see just how beautiful these are. And maybe a slightly non-traditional green, right? It's more like a green blue, but I really, really like the look. And we have this style of leaf in both a large and a small size. We're gonna do the next one in Rustic Wilderness, which is one of my favorite new colors. It's really pretty. And once again, while I ink it, I'm taking care actually to not be perfect, to not ink everything completely, so that there's some kind of changes in texture and it's a little little bit lighter up towards the top of that leaf. Here is our third style of leaf, and so we're gonna ink this guy up in some Twisted Citron, just making a little bit darker towards the bottom. And of course, you can use these leaves on their own, or you can add some cool detail over top. And once again, the stencil has those etched guides, so it's got the shape of the leaf. You can just line that right up and then ink it up. And we're gonna ink it with some Lucky Clover ink, and you'll see just how pretty that's gonna look. So I love that the leaves look great on their own, but they also look really cool with this detail. Now we have the smaller version of that same leaf, and we're gonna ink this one up in the peacock feathers again just to kind of bring that color back and then for the detail on the leaf we're going to do some rustic wilderness and then here you can see how it all turns out it's so much fun to play with different shades of green and layer them over top each other to see how these leaves can look different depending on what colors you use and then these are all the leaves included in this beautiful stencil and they are so much fun to add to cards and shari is going to be doing the most beautiful card in just a little bit but i wanted to show you how great they are to layer before that so they're really really beautiful when you layer them over top of each other so we're going to ink up this larger leaf here and we're going to do the lucky clover at the bottom and and then the Twisted Citron at the top, just like we did earlier. And then for the detail part of the leaf, we're gonna use pine needles so that it's nice and bold. Now, just like we've been adding detail over top of the leaves, you can actually also overlap these leaves too and get a really cool play of different inks. So we're gonna take one of those large leaves, one of my favorite ones there, and we're gonna create just a cool focal point on the card by layering them and kind of playing with the angle. I'm gonna look through the stencil, find the perfect angle, and then use my post-it notes to block off uh, any of the open areas there. And then we're gonna do some peacock feathers for this leaf. So we're just gonna ink that whole thing up in the same color. Once again, just kind of having some some parts darker and some lighter and just letting it be a little imperfect. And then here you can see what that looks like. Isn't that beautiful? It's just a fun little focal point on a clean and simple card. And you can take cute stamped images and put them in these leaves. So we're gonna take some of the Jaguars from Toucan Do It so you can see what these look like. And I can't wait for you guys to see how Shari used these leaves later on in the video. Here is a look at the Slimline Tropical Leaves border, and this die is so beautiful. I love these leaves so much. They're, of course, perfect for Slimline cards, but they're really great on A2 size cards, too. So here's a look at what it looks like on a Slimline card. And then here I wanted to show you how fun it is to layer the different leaves together, and that's how you can get a really cool dynamic look. Now, these tropical leaves are perfect, of course, for the Jaguars in our Toucan Do It set, but they're great for a lot of other things, too. We use them with the new Delightful Daisy die. They're 
They're really great as seaweed. There's so many fun things that you can imagine these leaves for. Now we just saw them layered on a slimline card and now we're gonna look at them layered on an A2 size card. You can see how you can just trim off the edges, but they're a great size for your A2 card. So I love that the die has so many uses on both slimline and A2. Next up, Shari is gonna create four gorgeous cards, three with stencils and one with this awesome new slimline border. So take it away, Shari. So I'm going to be using the new Tropical Leaves Backdrop Stencils. There are two, and you can see when you layer them together, you get a fully filled background. I'm going to start with the one that has more leaf openings, and I have a piece of white Bristol cardstock, and I've used some temporary adhesive to stick it to my media mat, and then I'm using the magnets to hold the stencil down. I've picked out three warm colors, some kitsch flamingo, a scattered straw, and some dried marigold. And I'm just going to ink up all the leaves on this particular stencil in these three colors. There's really no rhyme or reason to the pattern of my colors. I just know that I want to evenly put all three of these colors on these leaves. So what I'm trying to do is do half a leaf or a third of a leaf if it's a very big leaf so that I can get all three colors on the leaf or at least two colors. For some of the smaller ones, there'll be a lot more of one than the other. But you can see there, even like that one on the left side, it's just got a little bit of pink on it. And then it will also have another color. I am making a full panel of this and it will be cut down. So I'm gonna have a little bit of excess that I could use for another project. Or you could always cut the panel to the size that you want and ink it that way. Either way is fine. I just went ahead and did a whole panel just because it's easier to see and then I can decide what part of my panel that I like the looks of the best with my die cut. So I've put that pink on, I've put that orange on, and now I'm going in with the scattered straw and filling in all the rest of the spaces that I've left white. I really like the look of these bright warm tones, even though the stencil is leaves. I think this has a really fun tropical look. And it doesn't matter if I'm going off the edge, because like I said before, I'm going to be cutting this down. So that's why I did not bother to protect the edges off my stencil. Now I can remove my stencil, and then I'm going to pull in the other one. And I'm just going to line it up. Using the grid mat really helps to line it up well, but you wanna make sure the openings fall in those empty spaces that the first stencil left behind. So I'm just making sure that that is where those new leaves are falling in those white spaces. I'll use my magnets to hold it down. And then for these leaves, I'm just using two colors. I'm using Twisted Citron and Salvage Patina but I'm using the same kind of concept as I did with three colors and I'm just doing a portion of each leaf so that each leaf can have both colors blended together on it and you get a nice variety on your background. So I'm just working my way around making sure that each of the openings that I have left that I see white is gonna end up with a little bit of color. And then I can go in with the salvage patina and finish it out, filling in all those white spaces. Making sure that I don't miss those little dots that are in there too. Some are right beside leaves, but there's a couple that are kind of outliers. But it's going to be kind of cool because you're going to get those cool color dots in the middle of a bunch of warm colored leaves. So now that everything is inked up, I can remove my magnets and pull my stencil away and have this really bright and colorful tropical leaf background. I'm going to be using one of these stitch rectangles to cut this into a panel that's going to go on that mermaid card base you see there. This is slightly smaller, so we're going to have a nice mermaid frame around this panel. And then for my sentiment, I'm keeping it simple. And I'm going to white emboss the sentiment onto some narwhal cardstock. So I'm just adding my anti-static powder. 
I'm going to cut each of these words into little rectangular banners. So I'm putting them against that top edge and I'm spacing them out so I have room to make my cuts. And then of course I have that scripty happy. These stamps are all from the happy, happy, happy stamp set. I'm just inking them up with some clear embossing ink and then I will add my white embossing powder to each of these, tapping off the excess and making sure they are well covered. And then I can take my heat tool and just heat those up till that embossing powder melts and you get those bright white sentiments on that gray cardstock. So I'll use the coordinating die to cut out the word happy. And then for the other three words, I'm just going to use my paper trimmer and trim them down into little rectangular banners. So it's really easy to cut the strip and then just cut them apart to where that gray is evenly spaced around the word. So I've put some foam tape all over the back of my panel. I'm going to go ahead and put that onto the card base. And I really like how that mermaid cardstock goes with that salvage patina in those leaves. And then I'm just placing my sentiment where I want them to go. And for this, I'm gonna keep it simple and just glue each of these down with some liquid glue so they're directly onto this card panel. I'm not gonna pop anything up with foam on this one. So I'm just adding some liquid glue to the back of that scripty happy. I'm starting with that, making sure I have it centered and where I want it. And then the other little banner pieces are going to go above and below and to the sides. So that's why I started with the word happy because it is the one word that is centered. And then I can work around it and get everything nice and evenly spaced. And then finally, to add a little bit of shimmer, I'm going to use my Stardust Stickles. And I'm actually using those dots that the stencil creates as my guide as to where to put my stickles. So I'm just going to shimmer up those little dots that's in the background and I added a few more in some white spaces as well. And then here is my finished card and I just love this background. I think it would be so much fun to make a bunch of these. For this card today, I am going to be stenciling the large leaves from the Tropical Leaf Stencil onto a background panel. I'm going to be creating clusters of leaves in the bottom right corner and the top left corner so that it frames up my images in the center of the card. I have a piece of speckled eggshell cardstock cut with the stitch rectangle and I'm going to be using these four inks to stencil my leaf. So I'm using Twisted Citron, Salvage Patina, Lucky Clover, and Peacock Feathers. You're going to see me go back and forth between the colors as I work around this card. I'm starting off with the Twisted Citron on this large leaf. A couple of these leaves do have stencils to stencil in the vein down the center and the spots on the leaf. So this one is like a two-step leaf and I'm going to be using two colors on this one. So I'm starting out with a lighter one which is Twisted Citron and then I'm going to pull this up and this stencil has etching on it so that you can line up the leaf. So I'm going to put it in my light so you can see it here. If you can see the etching to outline the leaf and so I can just line that up with the stenciling I've already done. And I'll just hold that in place with my magnets. And I'm also using my post-it note tape to kind of protect the edges so I don't get too overzealous with my inking and go off into another leaf or off the edge of the stencil. So I use salvage patina to fill in those details on that leaf. Now I'm going in with a different leaf I've just turned it around in the direction that I want it. And then this is going to overlap the leaf that I've already stenciled and you're gonna get this fun layered look. There's also some really small leaves on this stencil so you get a really nice variety of sizes and shapes. And these also have the added etching and detail 
stenciling that you can add to them if you want. And as you can see, I'm changing up my colors a little bit so that that one's not exactly like the big one, like the first one that I did. I'm using Lucky Clover on this one at the bottom that's really going to help frame it up because this is a nice dark green. And then I'm moving on to the upper part. So I'm starting out with that big leaf with Twisted Citron again, but this one is a different shape. And then I'm pulling in my peacock feathers for this leaf. Actually, no, I think that was my salvage patina. So I can use the peacock feathers to do the details because it's a darker teal color. I am going to do a little bit of blending on this leaf. I'm going to pull a little bit of that Lucky Clover into the tip of it so you kind of get some shading, which I just thought was fun, which I will add one to my other cluster down there in the same kind of style. And then I'm also repeating that really dark Lucky Clover that was at the bottom at the top. And I just think that really balances out and frames things up nicely. Going in with that peacock feathers for the details on that salvaged patina leaf. And then now I'm just using kind of the edges to fill in so I don't have that white space that was kind of left on that one. And then I'm going to add one more small leaf back on the bottom. And this is the one that I'm actually going to do with the Twisted Citron and then bring a little bit of that Lucky Clover into the tip. So it kind of matches the one that is in the opposite corner on the upper side. And then here is that finished background. I just think those clusters of leaves are so much fun. And then I'm going to take my peach fuzz ink and I'm just blending it onto the edges of this panel and you get a really cool orangey glow on the edges. I just think it really adds some nice definition to this background that I've created. Kind of adds some shadow where the leaves are. And then finally to finish the background panel, I'm adding some gold splatters and I'm actually using the very pale gold that I don't reach for very often, but I thought it would add some super subtle shine and it certainly did. The splatters are really small. I kept them really small and I kept them just on the leaves. So there's very few through the center and they're really not very obvious unless you look for them, but they really look nice on that speckled eggshell cardstock. For my sentiment, I'm going to stamp Have a Wild Day from the Two Can Do It stamp set onto a little banner cut out of ballet slipper cardstock. And then I've also cut a stitch frame from some guava cardstock. So I'm just putting this panel, now that that watercolor is dry, onto a card base. And then the little frame is going to go in the center. And I just thought this was a really fun look to have this frame and those leaves cross over behind the frame. So they're in the frame and they're also outside of the frame. I've just laid all my little images that I'm going to use on here so that I can see where to put my sentiment. I've added some foam squares to the back of it so it's popped up a little bit. And then I'll also use some foam squares to add my images. So I have this cute little jaguar that's going to go in the center of my frame. And then I have those little butterflies just decorating around the frame. I like how they cross over the frame. And then of course that cute little lizard crawling along the top. And then here is that finished card using that new tropical leaf stencil to create these clusters of leaves to frame up my critters. 
I'm going to be recreating a card by Elise that uses the new Tropical Leaves background stencils to create a lovely green tropical background. This stencil is two parts. There are two stencils that layer together to create a full background on the card. And I'm going to start out with the one with more leaves. I'm going to be using four different ink colors. I have Sage Leaf, Peacock, Cilantro, and Artichoke. So on the first stencil, I'm going to use two of these greens, and then for the second stencil, I'm going to use the other two. So I'm going to start out using the peacock, and I'm just blending in those leaves that have all the really small leaves off of them. So I'm kind of picking the same style leaf for each color. So on this stencil, this is the one that I'm using peacock. You can see I'm picking out all those leaves that are similar. And I'm not worrying too much if my ink kind of goes over into another leaf. They're going to blend together and it's going to look just fine. Now I can go in with the cilantro and I'm going to use my blending brush to color in that other style leaf that's on this stencil as well as those little smaller leaves. And I didn't bother with cleaning off my stencil between the two colors. If I pick up some of that peacock and it blends in with the cilantro, I think that it will look just fine. You can see I'm actually pulling some peacock into the bottoms of those big leaves that I've colored with the cilantro. And I'm doing all this on a piece of white cardstock that's cut with a outside in stitch rectangle. So this already has that stitching detail and it's just going to go in a card base and have a little white border around it. So now that I've finished with all those, I can pull that stencil away and then I'm going to take the second one and you can see how the openings in this stencil fill in the white spaces that the first stencil left. So I'm just making sure that's lined up in those voids that were left from the first stencil and I'll just hold it in place with my magnets. And then I'm moving on to my other two colors of green. So for this one, I'm using Sage Leaf to do this style of leaf. And I'm doing the little ones in the Sage Leaf as well because there's not as many of that style with the tiny leaves on this stencil as there was on the first one. And then lastly, I will do those bigger leaves with the artichoke ink. So you're going to get this really cool look with all these different shades of green. I also think this would be really pretty if you picked another shade, like do it in different shades of pink or different shades of orange and get that monochromatic look. But this would also be really pretty if you picked four totally different colors and did the leaves the same way. And I really like how this dark one kind of catches on the stencil and you get some nice dark edges, but they kind of fade away as the ink dries and absorbs into the paper a little bit. I want to make sure I get all those little dots on that stencil covered so that all the places are filled in with this pattern. And then I can pull my stencil away and I have this beautiful green leaf background. Now I'm going to use some freshly cut grass so this is a fifth color of green and I am just going to bring that in on the edges and give the edges a little bit of a green glow. And I just think that this background is so striking and beautiful. So now to work on the sentiment of my card. I've already cut out the word wild using Louis ABCs. And now I'm stamping the have a and day from the two can do it set. I've skipped the word wild because my die cuts are going to spell that out. And then I can just trim them down into some small little banners. So I white embossed that on a piece of black cardstock using some Lawn Fawn white embossing powder. And these little banners are just gonna go before and after my die cut letters. So I'm putting some adhesive all over the back of that panel that I stenciled earlier. And I have a white card base here. I'm just gonna center that up and you're gonna see I'm going to get this 
thin white border around all the edges. And then I've laid all my letters on here so I know the spacing and then I can just pick it up with my tweezers and start to glue these directly to that background. So I started in the center with the eye and then I'm working my way out. I like the look that Elise made with the letters not perfectly lined up. They're kind of up and down and not in a straight line and I just think that is so much fun. For the little Hava and Day, I'm going to use some foam squares and pop those up a little bit. And I'm using black foam squares here so that they blend in with the cardstock, not that you really see them too much. And then for all my little animals from the Two Can Do It stamp set, I've already colored and cut them out with the coordinating dies. And I'm using some foam squares to attach those as well. I've also cut out some little flowers and the butterflies. This little toucan is going to go on top of the eye, which I just think is so cute. Got my little butterflies here to go in that top right corner. My little lizard, I just think he's so cute. I love to put him in all kinds of places on these cards. My other jaguar, and then I have a couple other flowers that I'm going to put down here in the bottom left corner. And then here is my finished card inspired by Elise's card and I just love that striking background and those animals are just so cute. I'm going to be remaking a slimline card that Lynette made and I'm starting out using some watercolor which is Wishing Well 12 by 12 paper and the largest slimline stitch rectangle die to cut the background for my card. And then I'm using the new Slimline Tropical Leaves Border Die to create a border along the bottom. I'm going to be layering two of these together. So I've cut one from cilantro cardstock. And then now I'm going to cut one from some noble fur cardstock to layer behind it. So you get this really fun layered leaf look. I'm going to go ahead and put that darker one right onto my Watercolor Wishes sky. And then I can layer the lighter cilantro one right on top. And of course I've cut that noble fur one a little bit taller so it peeks up behind the cilantro. I've also cut some of the new tropical vines out of the same cilantro and noble fur cardstock and I'll be putting these across the top. So I'm starting out with those darker ones. And I'm just putting a little bit of liquid glue on the back, a couple of dots on the leaves and down the vine. And these are going to fill the top of my card. This one's just going to go onto the left side and then I'll trim off the excess that overhangs off of my card. And then before I put this onto a card base, I'm actually going to go ahead and stamp the sentiment in the center. I wanted to get those leaves at the top and those, or those vines at the top and those leaves at the bottom in place so that I could see where I could put my sentiment. I'm using the Happy Birthday from the Giant Birthday Messages stamp set and the Have a Wild Day from the Two Can Do It stamp set. And I'm just stamping that down in my Misty. My magnet was a little bit in the way to where it didn't stamp down at first, but I moved it out of the way and everything is good. And then before I put anything else onto this card front, I'm going to put it onto a card base. So this card base is three and a half by eight and a half. And then I'm going to take a pink Copic marker and just color in all the letters for that happy birthday. Now I can take those cilantro vines that I cut and I'm going to layer those over top of the darker vines that I've already put onto my card.
and I'm actually using both ends of the same vine for this part since they're just going in the corners and then I can save that second vine for another project I have some cute little jaguars from the two can do it stamp set and I'm just tucking them behind these leaves that are along the front which I just think is so much fun. I love how they can tuck behind there and peek out behind those leaves. And then I've also got some toucans from the Toucan Do It stamp set. I'm going to put these on with some foam squares. So this one's sitting up on this vine. And then I also have a flying one that I'm gonna add as well. I also have the cute little lizard walking across the vine in the center. And then I have some of the hibiscus flowers that are part of the stamp set to just decorate around my little jungle as well. So the other toucan is going to go there on the right side. And then I also have the little trails that are part of that set, which you can stamp directly onto the card, but there is also a die that cuts them out. So I've used the die that cuts them out and I'm gonna add this one with the little heart behind that toucan that's flying. And I'm just tucking it behind that jaguar's tail so that everything fits nicely. And then I also have the butterflies that are part of this stamp set to add to the left side. And I'm going to use that other little trail that comes in the set for this butterfly. So this one just has a regular loop, not a heart. And then I can just add this glass butterfly towards the bottom. And everything frames up that sentiment nicely. And here is my finished card that is inspired by the card that Lynette created. Thanks so much for letting me recreate your card today, Lynette. Thank you so much for these gorgeous cards, Shari. I just love this card design. It's so cute. I love how Lynette had tucked her little characters in those awesome leaves. The colors that you used on the background of this card, oh my goodness, I wish it was my wallpaper in my house. It's so pretty. I love the way that Shari layered the leaves on this card. It's so beautiful and so fun and such a great way to highlight a cute critter. And then the mixing of the different greens on this card make the coolest background that I just love and that sentiment is just too fun. Now next up we have some beautiful cards by the design team and this card by Leticia is so sweet. I love her pink leaves in the background. So beautiful and so much fun. Next up we have the stencils used in a really subtle way by Audrey. Can you see them there in the background? It really fills it in and gives it this fun rainforest tropical feel. This card here is so much fun by Mindy. I love her awesome background and how those leaves are more like white on a green background. And then here, when you open that center picture window card, look at that, isn't that beautiful? It really gives this lush tropical rainforest feel that I just adore. Lynette's tropical leaf stencil background is perfect for her adorable sloths to be hanging out in. And this is such a fun belated birthday card. So cute and so adorable. Here, I love how Leticia created a cool sky by layering all of those individual tropical leaf stencil pieces with the tropical leaves backdrop over top. So pretty and so much fun. And then here is the card by Elise that inspired us to make our card today. I love that the tropical background has this cool vintage feel. And then here, this tone on tone look by Elena is so pretty. I love that these leaves look great in green, but they look great in other colors too. And this pink kind of lilac feel is so pretty. And I love how she's got those cute little toucans and butterflies flying around on this background. We cannot wait to see what you guys do with these new stencils and new dyes. So make sure to share it with us. We can't wait to see all the tropical leaf backgrounds. Thank you so much for watching today. And I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.